Look at this thing. We got poles just getting hit left and right. and welcome to Fried Chicken Fishing. Today, we're out here stocking our pantry. If you've been watching the channel for a while, then you know I do a lot of catch and release, but not today. Today, we are going to can this healthy resource. We are doing some canned catfish. I don't know if you've been to the grocery store lately, but I have, and prices have skyrocketed. Not to mention that they're always trying to poison us. Processed ingredients, horrible things. So if you want to prep for your family, you want to learn how to get something when the grocery grocery store doesn't have anything, then watch this video all the way to the end. I'm going to show you how easy it is. Store your own catfish for the long term and get some protein in your pantry that you don't have to worry about grocery stores supplying you. This is real easy, especially this time of the year. We're out here on the banks. Let's get baited up and let's get casted up. I already caught my bluegill last night. I'm using cut bait today. A really fun video. So I hope you stick around till the end. Let's go. Woo, that wakes you up. There we go. Get in, big boy. Look at this. This has got to be a blue. This thing just smacked it. Oh. oh, man, it's a big old flathead. Look at that. Yes. Well, the sun came out, and so did the fish. We found them nice and shallow. Now, she is a really big spawning fish right now. Look at this thing. Now, if it wasn't this time of year and they weren't spawning, I would can her because flathead is absolutely delicious. But I can't do it this time of year. Let's get it back. All right. Yeah, she knows she's going back in the water. Right there next to that wood you might not be able to see on camera is uh, where we got that big hit. So now that I know these fish are definitely shallow, I'm going to go find some flats. I'm going to find something around 10 feet deep. Now we might have to go ahead and keep some spawning catfish today, but I'm definitely not going to keep a big old flathead like that. She's, uh, she's going to breed a whole lot of babies for us to be able to catch in the future. So we want to make sure we keep this fishery strong, right? Heck yeah. Out of real curiosity, I've tucked myself all the way back up in this creek. So it's about six feet deep uh, where we're anchored up now, and it goes, you know, real, real shallow back here. I'm gonna go let the bait soak near some more open water. We've been here for well, half an hour, 35 minutes, something like that. And there's been not a single bite. Let's get somewhere with some catfish. I'm going to stop filming for a little while. When I come back, we're going to be catching catfish and I'll explain to you what I did. There we go. We got him. There we go. Yes. All right. We got our first catfish in the boat since this morning at 9.30. It is 1.19 in the afternoon. Going in the live well for our canned catfish. First fish since 9.30 this morning. It is now 1.20 in the afternoon. <laughs> I've been getting bite after bite after bite and been missing. But hey, we got one in. We just missed another fish. There's some good fish here though. I think we finally are on them. <laughs> it has taken all day, but we found about 25 feet, of, uh, it's about 25 feet of water big steep bank behind me uh, open channel in front 
and I think we finally found the fish because we've had bite after bite after bite. There we go. <clears throat> oh, that's a good hookup right there. There we go. Oh, this feels heavier. Good, we need ourselves a heavier fish. I actually need a net for him. He don't want to come up. We got ourselves a... There we go. Better safe than sorry with how many fish we've caught today. Oh, right. Hey, fish number two in this spot. We found him. Not gonna lie, I was getting nervous. But we have found our beautiful catfish to stock up our pantry. Look at that. Let's get him in there. Let's keep going. Come on. Take it down. I don't know what this is doing. It's doing something weird. There we go. Fish on. Man. He toyed with that for a while. There we go. That is a nice big channel. Hey, when catfishing, persistence pays off, all right? Our last fish was at 9.30 and we got three in a row. Boom, 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 because we found the right spot. We went shallow, we hit the shore, we went super deep. And then, hey, we found that sweet spot, a 25 foot hole right off of a steep ledge. And we have all of these beautiful channels, exactly what we were looking for, all right? Let's get them in there. Let's go, let's keep going. This is too much fun. Hey, it feels really good when you work hard and you keep going, all right? Don't give up when you're catfishing out here. They're out there and they're always hungry. I really didn't think this through. I need another one of my bluegill in there. Oh my God, it's like sticking your hand in an Iron Maiden with all those spikes, especially these young ones. <laughs> Somehow, magically, I got him out. It is brought to my attention that it may not be legal to use game fish, as in bluegill green sunfish, as cut or live bait in your state. I'm in North Carolina. It is 100% legal to do as long as they're caught legally on rod and reel, not in a cast net. But please check your local regulations. I would hate for someone to get in trouble for doing this because they watched one of my videos and thought it was okay in their state. So definitely check your local laws. Yet another one. Oh my gosh. All right. Hey, look at this. Catfishing is easy as long as you can find them, all right? <laughs> Middle of the day, crushing it. Look at that, yes. Let's get him in the live way. Oh, let's put him in there. All of his friends. Ooh. Mm. Yes. <sighs> Pays to be patient, all right? I know people say stick and move and, and you can't be patient with catfishing and that's a myth, but no, it's patience and persistence is what it is. We've hit like 10 spots today until we finally nailed the one where we're catching fish after fish after fish after fish fish yes there we go another one. Oh my gosh it's like three minutes that's crazy <laughs> yes look at you that is another beautiful one I think I'm almost at a cut bait here when it's on it's on. Number five. <laughs> Let's get him in the lap well. <laughs> I can't believe this. This is too much fun right now. We got poles just getting hit left and right. I can't even. 
I can't keep my composure. Oh, there we go. He, I was just about to put the rod back down. Smacked it. There we go. Oh my God, yes. Oh man, hit that thing like crazy. Just about to put the rod back in its holder. What do we have? Yes. All right. Another beautiful channel. Oh, right. look at that. All right. That thing hit and then went away for like three, four minutes. And I was just about to put the rod back in the holder and just whack, just <laughs> crushed it. Oh man, let's get him in the live well. Plus I have one more. Oh, look at this. Oh my gosh, this is a super rare fish. We're not gonna eat him. What's this? It's a cedar sub. What? <sighs> I could sit here and do this all day long, but we got a ton of work once we get back to the kitchen. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna fillet these fish, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna get them into jars and pressure can them for long-term storage for you and your family. You ready? Shoop. Boom! What's up? We're back at the house. Let's get to cleaning some catfish. All right. Cleaning catfish is super simple and you don't need a lot of tools to do it. Sharp fillet knife. Um, I got a couple just to, you know, see which one's sharper. A uh, pair of pliers. I usually use needle nose, but couldn't find them. So linesman's. And a bucket of ice water because you want to get that flesh down cold as fast as you possibly can. You're going to start by making two cuts here on the gill plate all the way up to the base of the head back here and you're gonna repeat on both sides then you're gonna start up top you're gonna come around that dorsal fin and you're gonna go all the way down the back the whole point of doing this is you're giving yourself a place where you'll be able to pull all of this skin off with one rip. Now, flip it over from the bottom and we're gonna cut the skin, trying your best not to cut all the guts. All right. Now that you got all your cuts made, simply grab the skin with your pliers. You wanna get a good grip with them. These linesmen actually are gonna do a great job and start peeling that skin all the way back. Now that you have all this done, filleting this is really easy. Just follow your same lines. Once you get right behind the dorsal fin here, you'll be able to start to feel the spine a little bit. You can kind of pop the tip on that a little bit. Once you get past down, just like that. You want to get that little piece of meat up on the neck, and then you're going to have to start riding your knife right down the rib cage, just like that. You have a beautiful catfish fillet, just like that. And get that right in your cold water as quickly as possible. Same thing for the other side. The tip of that knife all the way down the rib cage, just like that. So you get your nice boneless fillet. And then get that right near cold water. This belly meat is really, really good. So if you can cut that and save that out from there, especially that we're canning this, that belly meat is really, really good meat. One cleaned, filleted catfish. And this will be really good for my compost pile, which is right behind me. So that's why I'm doing that down here. <laughs> that yellow up there can actually be what gives you a little bit of a fishier taste. So if that bothers you, just cut it off. And if you're anything like me, then you have a friend here who watches this whole thing. 
There you go, Riley. None of it goes to waste. Is that good? You want more? You want more? Sit. Gentle. Gentle. Good girl. <laughs> I need to shower. Welcome to my kitchen. So to pressure can, you're gonna need a few things. You need a good pressure cooker. Besides your jars, which I have in my dishwasher under a sanitized setting, but you can also boil them. Um, and that's how I used to do it. We just got this dishwasher last year, so this is really nice. You need new lids, which I have in here, and a pot, which I'm gonna boil to sanitize those. And you need to heat up that little uh, red ring on the edge there to get a good seal when you're pressure canning. Uh, these little jar grabber tongs. Before you start, give your catfish one last rinse. So get all that water out of there that you had before. Take a look at your fillets. Make sure they're all looking good. White fillets, look at how beautiful those fillets are. Mm, unbelievable. All right, now if I find any this yellow meat right here, this is the this is the meat that'll have a little more of that catfishy taste to it. I might set this aside and cook for the dog. Um, you know, you, you can eat it and you can can it. It's not bad for you. I just want to make sure that the fish that we come up with is as good as it can taste. Just like that. Beautiful little chunks of catfish meat. Stick it in your bowl. Another big one. Look at that. I'm going to trim that little top piece off. Give that to the old dog. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful little catfish cubes. I'm putting jalapenos, garlic, and a little bit of canning salt in each jar. So let's chop these up. Let's do it. So with jalapenos, just the stems and the ends, just take those off. Make a little pile of rings and put a few into each catfish. I don't want to overpower the taste of the fish but I do want to have a little bit of spice. Pile of jalapeno. Just gonna smack that off the edge here. All we're gonna do is smash all these cloves. Gonna peel off that skin, super easy, just like that. With the raw pack method, you gotta use hot jars. So all that means, literally, is your jars are hot. These are hot to the touch. I've had them in my dishwasher here on a sanitized setting. I've got them nice and hot. I'm gonna get my tap water nice and hot, and I'm gonna give them a good rinse, make sure there's no residual soap or anything like that, all gross. And then bring them right over here to my station. All right, we got our hot jar, and all we're doing for this raw pack method is we are gonna just stuff the fish in there, just like that. Stuff it down, and you really want it tight. Make sure get all the air pockets out of there. Before you add the top, just add, if you're adding a few pieces of jalapeno or something, stuff that down in there, just like that. A couple pieces of garlic, just like that, and then fill it up. Now, if you haven't canned before, there's something called headspace, which is the amount of room that you have from the top of your food to the top of the lid. So for raw pack fish, you want one inch of headspace. And you really, this is like the most important thing. So usually this is about one thumb. So that is one inch of headspace, just like that. All right, now you're gonna come in here, whoo, which is really hot. It's really hot. Tongs would have been good. You're gonna take this, clean off the top of your lid with a piece of paper towel. Stick that on there and screw that down tight. And there you go. Stick that right into your pressure canner, just like that, right on the side. All right, let's keep going and tighten that down. You don't want to crank down on it too much. They say two finger tight. And there you go. You got another canned fish. Go. Drop it right in your pressure canner. Now I don't have, I just have this water kind of warm, 
Um, I'm gonna start heating this up now, actually. So this water just kind of warm, just to make sure you don't have any stress to your glass. All right, just like that is our last jar. Look at that. Mm. I'm gonna let this guy a little start steaming. We're gonna let that go for 10 minutes and then we're gonna drop this little pressure regulator right on the top and then we're gonna slowly monitor until that hits 11, which is 11, we're gonna do 11 pounds of pressure for 100 minutes. Now I found that once this gets up to temperature, it's really easy to regulate, especially if you're on electric like flat top, that anytime you come back and all of a sudden this is down at like eight, nine pounds, something like that, you actually have to start the 100 minutes all the way over which you don't want to do. <laughs> you really don't want to do that. We've got a roll and boil going, and that is shooting up steam. It's actually, I'm not sure if you can really see it on the camera, but that's shooting up steam and making a heck of a lot of noise. So I'm gonna start my 10 minute timer right now. In 10 minutes, we're gonna drop this little cap. Boom. Ooh, we're almost there. Woo! <laughs> we are cooking, all right. 100 minutes, one hour, 40 minutes, if you're below 2,000 feet. 11 pounds of pressure for 100 minutes. I will see you in 100 <laughs> All right, it has been 100 minutes, one hour and 40 minutes. All we're gonna do is turn the heat off, lift it up, and move it off to the side, and we need to let it depressurize all on its own. Don't remove that top cap. Don't try to press down and depressurize anything. You can break your jars really easily doing it that way. Just let it depressurize all the way down by itself. Who doesn't like bread with canned catfish? and then open it away from you like that so all that steam doesn't blast you in the face. Oh, look at that, that looks so good. We take our little gripper things, come in, grab it, and then set those right on a wooden plate or a towel. Don't ever set this right on a uh, stone countertop though, you can crack it or if you have like a linoleum, you can definitely melt it because these are still super hot. Stupor, stupor hot. But you don't test these lids for 12 to 24 hours, all right? Don't test them, don't try to push them down for 12 to 24 hours. You really wanna let these pop down on their own. Oh my gosh, those look so good. Little fresh homemade bread, homemade mayonnaise, canned catfish with some fresh spring onions from the garden right there. What an incredible, healthy breakfast this is. I really hope you try this at home because this is really, really good. Oh, damn, my scrub. Dude. Mmm. So you, good. You're being serious, right? No, it is so good. What? The catfish is good. Very good. It's legit, like, there's not What really is else is in there? Okay, let me taste Alright everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It means a whole lot to me. You can follow me on TikTok and Twitter. I want you to hit the subscribe button. Do it for your fellow countrymen. And if you're not, 
in the United States than just do it for a good old boy that likes to fish. I really worked hard on this video, so I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you at the next one.